Cookies and cakes and that spectacular escape by de Valera and his fellow internees from Lincoln Prison in 1919 provide the setting for Declan Dunn's new book, Peter's Key. It tells the story of Declan's grandfather, Peter de Lockery, who made the key that sprang the Republican prisoners and allowed them to walk boldly out of the prison without having to dig a tunnel or fire a single shot. He was Pat Kenny's guest on Tuesday. Another very important individual, Sean Milroy, who was a cartoonist. When they had decided we're going to escape, Milroy designed a cartoon, a funny cartoon, which had an image of Sean McGarry, another prisoner, holding a very large key, another inset on the same postcard of McGarry sitting inside, facing an enormous keyhole. And it was a humorous cartoon, saying the key is too big, I can't get in, or this kind of thing. But what the warders didn't understand or realise was that the dimensions of this cartoon this the key... template. Yes, for the key. For the key itself. So then they had to get a dummy key and a blank key, if you like, that they could then carve into the shape that was required to open the lock. How did they get the key in, the dummy? There were at least four attempts and various keys. They got them in generally in cakes. On one occasion, they told the warders, look, we put a lot of work into this. There's icing on the cake. Would you please leave it alone? And they had the key in the icing. So it was quite uh, daring and brave of them to do this. Now, who managed to copy the key? Because they had to make a wax copy of a key that would open the lock. That's right. Uh, De Valera actually did that. He was an altar server and the priest used to come into the prison chapel would leave the keys in the sacristy. Candle wax? Exactly. Because of the altar? Yeah. This was melted or softened and the impression made with the help of another prisoner, James J. Dobbin, who was instrumental in the escape throughout. And once they got that impression, it was transferred to the picture postcard and then then various keys came in and various cakes. It was very difficult for them because one broke and then another one didn't work. So Peter decided that he needed a blank or blanks and he had to craft the key from this blank using very rudimentary penknife. So they escaped. And the ownership of the key fueled a vicious dispute between Peter de Lockery and de Valera. Peter had made de Valera promise him to give the key back on the outside. And because of the events that happened, they all got distracted, the treaty negotiations, the civil war. But Peter was intent on getting the key back. It meant a great deal to him. And he sent letters to de Valera asking for the key back and didn't get replies. On one occasion, he did get a reply. And he became infuriated about the way he was being treated or the way he saw he was being treated. It eventually ended up that Peter was elected to Dahl Aaron, indeed, as was De Valera. And in 1929, De Lucre met De Valera in the Dahl restaurant and said quite forcefully, I want the key back. And he got the key back with a letter in Irish from De Valera. And uh, he was interviewed by the Kilkenny people shortly afterwards, Peter was, and he was asked, well, did you have a drink uh, to celebrate this handover? And the line from the Kilkenny people was that Mr De Lucre replied in the negative. There was enmity between Dev and Peter de Lockery. There was. In fact, when Peter got out of prison, he was released about two months or after the escape. They mm-hmm. were all released. But in his speech in Kilkenny, he made a very interesting point. He said to the people of Kilkenny, he said, be very careful of your leaders. Question them. After the treaty then was rejected by Eamon de Valera and others, Peter took the pro-treaty side. That didn't help matters either. Declan Dunn, author of Peter's Key, with Pat Kenny on Tuesday. And I see that the book is racing up the Amazon worldwide Kindle charts, so all good.